just going to start by saying that I run into so many people, both, you know, on in the coaching world, but also in the full-time professional world that miss this aspect, right? It's, you know, I just got laid off or I don't like my boss or there's a bazillion reasons why they want to change. And the priority just becomes change jobs. Um, I think for so many people, you need to get to the, why are you changing, right? The, the successful career transition is going to hit on a number of levels, but the why behind the change is probably the biggest. So doing that is hard, right? Assessing you know, am I looking for satisfaction? Am I looking for flexibility? Am I looking for purpose or identity or fill in the blank? Uh, you know, getting to that level is difficult. So we use a tool called a life wheel. Um, you know, for, for folks that are familiar with life wheels, it's it's a way to assess different aspects of your life kind of introspectively. We use a pretty advanced one with a lot of different categories. But what we'll have people do is say, OK, can you numerically or quantifiably score on a scale of one to 10 different aspects of your life in the current state, right? Current job, current boss, current work complications. Let's try to get a number behind what that looks like, right? And then from there, once we've scored those categories, we can start to ask questions around, you know, what are the things on this wheel that you'd want a career transition to impact, right? Whether for, you know, the better or for the worse. I don't think you're going to be perfect tens across the board. And we talk about that. But, you know, maybe the reason why you want to change is more time with your kids. Maybe it's it's compensation, right? And you just don't feel like you're being treated fairly. All of those things need to be up front and on the table when considering a career transition because a successful change is going to address those, you know, those, those, those gaps or those issues. So life wheel is where we begin. Um, and then, again, once we kind of have that information, we begin the process of designing a career really to fit the lifestyle that you want first. The job is just a function of, of the lifestyle, right? We, we work to live, and that's a big part of our coaching philosophy. So um, we start by looking at that lifestyle component at the very beginning. But the first place we'll go is the why, right? And we'll use the life wheel. We'll talk about what kind of things in your life do you want this career change to impact. Once we have a good understanding of the lifestyle component, it's time to start framing, you know, what a successful career side looks like. Um, typically where we go is something we call the four pillars and there's no slide ne needed for these. It's just four different areas of, of career. So we'll work with, with our clients to define what they're passionate about, um, what motivates them, what gets, what, what gets them excited. Why do they get out of bed in the morning, right? What are the things that they want to do and spend time uh, on? The second one is just strengths. Um, what are they really good at? Sometimes that comes back to, you know, it's easier to work on something you're good at. It's easier to promote and have better opportunities when you're doing work that you're good at. Um, it's also just more enjoyable. So strengths is another component we focus in on. Um, work environment um, is another complicated one, but also really important, right? Where do you want to work? How do you want to work? Do you want to work in a big company, a small company? Do you want lots of diversity? Is that important to you, right? Um, do you want opportunities for promotion? Um, do you not care about that? Uh, environment could also just be, do you want to work from home or your car or the beach? Um, but yeah, we define the parameters for what a successful environment would look like. And then the last one, obviously not the most important thing, but a big factor is just compensation, right? How do you want to be compensated? Um, once we've got parameters on those four things, um, we can kind of reflect, right, and say, okay, what is it, what does our current career state look like? How close to these four factors are we in terms of skills and experiences and the work type that we're doing? Um, once we've assessed the current state, uh, it's time to start trying to populate the desired end state. So again, we'll use some tools. Sometimes it's just simple career mapping. We'll ask people what their five-year plan might be or three-year plan might be. But we try to start to get an idea of the kinds of jobs or, or companies um, where where our people could accomplish the type of work that fits into that passion, strengths, environments, and compensation space. Um, so again, kind of working from that current state to that desired end state. Um, and then really the nuts and bolts of the process is just getting into the weeds on researching the types of job roles or the types of companies, the types of work opportunities um, that are going to try and create the best overlap between current state you exist in with all of the skills and experiences and value you currently have, and then where you want to go, right? We try to identify the gaps. There could be, you know, skill-based gaps, experience-based gaps. Uh, there could be environment or compensation gaps, but we try to identify all that in the process, but it's really going from point A to point B 
picking out, you know, what's working already versus what do we need to work on and what kind of time frame is it going to take to address that? It's where a lot of the work happens on the initial side um, in, in terms of job searching. Um, to get real specific, I would say the first thing we're going to recommend people do, and, and this, of course, might depend on the industry or the, the type of role they're looking at, but it's, it's to identify people that have the jobs they think they want and go talk to them. Um, as simple as that sounds, I would say that that is the most effective thing I think our client base has done in the past two years that we've been you know, career coaching, but it's talk to people that have the roles and the responsibilities that you think you'd be interested in. You're going to learn a ton from those networking conversations and you'll be able to scope down or narrow down kind of your, your short list, right? Um, I would say we start with a big giant list of possible companies, possible job roles. Uh, there might be 20 different things on that list to begin with. And we'll work with clients to kind of throw those out there and brainstorm and populate. Uh, we'll put that research plan to learn more about what those roles mean and the compensation that comes with them, the environments that you might be working in. Again, kind of back to that four criteria that we talked about. But the objective, again, to be specific, is we tried to get clients to narrow their search down to somewhere between three to five ideal companies and then one to three job roles. And the reason why we try to get so specific is because that's going to make the churn on the application side and the networking side and the content creation side so much easier, right? It's, it's very difficult to be marketable to 100 companies and 100 potential roles. It's not as difficult to be marketable to two, right? Um, so the process of trying to put yourself out there, which is the next part of the job seeking phase, uh, becomes a heck of a lot easier when you've got kind of your niche network figured out. Again, another caveat here is that <laughs> I mean, we've had candidates or not candidates. We've had clients that we've worked with that will literally change the thing that they want to do, you know, a couple weeks into the process of working with them. So your interests change, your life situations change, what you want changes. And I just want to say, hear it from me and I'm sure you'll hear it from Andrew and others, but like that is OK. Right. Changing the quote unquote dream job happens all the time. Um, as long as you're aware of the changes and you can keep coming back to that that life wheel model of like, what do I actually want? You're going to be just fine. Um, but yeah, in a nutshell, we start with, again, a big, broad, generally vague list of skills. Um, typically, what we do with clients is we'll just ask them straight up, right? Like off the top of your head with no research. Tell me some of the things you're interested in, right? Give me five skills. We'll start with those. We'll give them kind of a research window. Well, you know, this is really where the coaching kind of comes into the process of we'll make recommendations based off what we know about the market and them and possible job opportunities. But we try to get somewhere between 15 to 20 potential job skills or job titles. Um, once we once we do that, uh, we would just call that a job shortlist. We'll do research about the day-to-day -day work. We'll talk to people. That's a big one. Remember, we'll learn about job flexibility in those roles. Uh, we'll try to get a good understanding of compensation and what the kind of problems you're solving. And this is where leveling also comes into play, right? Like a senior level project manager versus a principal level or a director level. What changes when you change levels? Um, that's where we'll get a lot of that research into our shortlist as well. And then we'll work to map all of that information into what we call a fringe map. Um, and you can really just think of this as, as bucketizing the information you've researched. So to help us understand um, you know, where we're most likely to have success from a transition perspective, and really what we mean by that is just getting the job, right? Not the four pillars and not the life wheel and not the lifestyle component, but just making that job change um, that's where we're going to start ranking from simple to moderate to complex. So again, I'll go back to my example of you're a project manager, you're interested in program management, uh, you think, right? That's one of your skills. As you think about what it's going to take to transition, you, you know, we'll, we'll help you identify, is that a complicated transition? Is it multiple steps to get there? Do you need education? Do you need mentorship? Do you need new experiences outside of your, you know, your day-to-day -day job that we have to go create in order to, to make that transition happen? Um, that's where we kind of get into the minutia of understanding the complexity. But yeah, we take that 15 to 20 skills list. We try to drop that into three separate buckets based on the, the likelihood, or maybe let's just say the path of least resistance. Your ideal job could be in any of those. And our job as you know, transition coaches is to come in and try to help you build the plan 
to, to get there. But it's all about understanding, you know, again, where you're most likely to have success, where you've got gaps, where you're going to meet most requirements, where you're not going to meet most requirements. So it's a lot of research, a lot of time. This is maybe the most time intensive or homework intensive part of the transition process is figured out the complexity in each of those target skills. Um, and again, once we've got that fairly well mapped out, it's a lot easier to, to do that narrowing down process that we talked about. Simple terms, um, try to find people that are going to have valuable information for you that are closer and closer to that, uh, let's just call it relationship cloud, right? Like if you don't have to go to strangers, don't, right? Do your research. Do you have family members? Do you have friends? Do you have password connections? Do you have alumni connections? Use the network that you already have to start that process. It might not have to be a total stranger. Assuming it is, because a lot of times that's what's happening, that's that's what's going on on LinkedIn. Um, you know, there's a couple ways you could approach it. I'm a huge fan of interacting in comments first, especially with people that are active. Now, let's be honest, most people sitting on LinkedIn are not going to be active. So the next best method might be a direct message or even an, an email if you can get an email address. Um, keep it simple, right? Uh, a paragraph worth of information is, in my opinion, the sweet spot. You do not need to write a novel. You do not need to convince them why you're awesome with a bunch of data and value in the initial conversation starter. Um, typically, what I what I try to recommend to folks that are you know, connecting or reaching out through direct messages um, is somewhere between like three to five sentences, right? Uh, let them know why you're reaching out, right? What's the purpose of the connection, number one? Try to come up with some sort of area of commonality right? Establish commonality with them, whether it's you're in the position I want to be in, or you work at the company I want to work at, or we went to the same school, or, you know, you post a picture of kids and I do that too. It could be anything, uh, but try to have some sort of a personal connection um, that's going to encourage them to respond and, and not just ignore the, you know, this creepy message that showed up. Um, try to get to a personal level and some sort of a commonality. And then of course, you know, uh, don't ask them for anything. I think that's another pretty big mistake that a lot of people make in cold calls or cold emails or cold direct messages is right off the bat, right? Where they don't know you and they've never heard of you before. You're asking them for 15 minutes of their time. Uh, that happens to me maybe 20 to 35 times a day. Um, <laughs> and I don't know these people and my time is my most valuable thing. So be respectful of that, right? Just establish the connection first. Your objective with you know, trying to start conversations with people that have valuable information should just be to start the conversation, right? You don't need to get a coffee chat. You don't need to have them do something for you. You don't need to ask for a referral from a total stranger that has no idea who you are, or what you're about. Just start the conversation, whether that's through comments or an email or a direct message, make it simple, get the conversation going, and you can kind of move into whatever space you need to once, you know, once the transition or the transaction has started verbally. For me, it goes back to that life wheel, right? If, if, you know, a step down in title or even a step down in compensation at the right company gives you the freedom in that environment space or that passion space, then it might actually be worth it, right? I, I don't think as a career coach, I can paint, you know, uh, with, with, a, with a brush, you know, the, the only answer to this question. It, it fully depends on what your lifestyle goals and your career goals are, but I would just encourage you that this happens all the time, right? All the time where, you know, I've worked with executives or directors coming from the construction industry or from the lumber industry. And they've said, you know, I, I really want to get into tech or I want to get into engineering, I want to do these things. Um, but, you know, my, my executive experience doesn't necessarily transfer at the same level. That That's okay, right? Uh, again, if it's, if it's a situation where it's creating the right work environment for them, um, lining them up for better, longer term career opportunities or better compensation, you know, maybe five or 10 years down the road, then it might absolutely be worth it uh, for them to do something like that or consider something like that. But, you know, in my opinion, if it's a dream company um, and we're talking about relatively minor title changes or relatively minor compensation changes, uh, I, I would say go for it, right? Because once you're in, usually the hard part is getting into the firm. Um, if they're larger companies with more job openings and more people, then typically moving around is not all that hard. And again, promoting and finding the right fit and right role for you is just part of that, you know, first couple year or two process. And that's where all the fun is. So 
yeah, if it's a place you really want to work and you're excited about it and it gives you the kind of lifestyle you want, I would say go for it. Titles, in my opinion, thanks to LinkedIn, are <laughs> they don't mean as much as they used to once you're outside of the company. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. I'd say this is probably about a third of the people that come to us is folks that are actually in career transition themselves and are feeling stuck. Um, so, uh, you know, first and foremost, it's it's common, right? Don't panic. Um, I would say just kind of some general rules of thumb, right? I, I'm a big fan of trying to figure it out for yourself. I'm not the person that's probably going to pick up, you know, the phone and call a coach immediately once something goes wrong. I, I'm going to experiment a little bit and I would encourage people to, to do the same, right? Don't, don't give up on yourself in the first week of not hearing back anything on your resume or not getting those networking returns or not hearing back on applications. Um, but at the same time, you know, if you've experimented and you've tried different approaches and you've, you know, done research on your own and you've, again, listened to talks like this on LinkedIn and those methods aren't applying, uh, you know, I, I would also encourage you, don't be the person that applies to 300 jobs in three months and gets nothing, right? I, I would say draw a line for yourself maybe before you make the decision to reach out for help of, you know, this is the point I'm going to reach. But but yeah, get get help, right? And and help doesn't have to be paid professional coaching help, right? It, it can be, go talk to people again that are in the roles that, um, you know, you want to be in or find family members, find friends, find people that have managers or interview people and, you know, try to leverage the network you already have to get some feedback, right? What is my resume missing? What is my LinkedIn profile missing? If you're still not getting any results or you're not getting the right feedback from that crowd, right? Go to the industry crowd. Start to meet strangers on LinkedIn. Start sending those direct messages. Start looking for feedback from that avenue. If that's not working, then again, you know, your last might your last option might be paid professional coaching. Um, get somebody that's got the experience to dive into that resume or that LinkedIn profile or whatever networking approach you're taking and give you feedback from that perspective. Um, in many cases, it's 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 you know, the problems that I generally run into are, are, are very specific, right? I wouldn't necessarily say there's these common themes. Sometimes there are, but it, it often depends on kind of the, the type of transition that's being attempted where somebody's just trying to bite off way too much, right? Um, I'd say another common scenario is we get people with 10 to 15 years of experience that are coming from an outside organization or an outside industry that don't know how to level themselves, right? So again, that example I talked about where I've got a director of, let's say, you know, construction management that has no idea where they would, you know, fit in level wise at a company like Meta or Netflix or, you know, pick a company. Um, it's stuff like that, that we, that we see a lot, but yeah, you know, don't struggle too long on your own, do your best to try and learn it for yourself, but um, draw that line and then go get help once you kind of reach that point. Um, and there's a spectrum of people out there that can help, right? There's tons of free resources. There's tons of paid resources you can decide how quickly you want to move through them, right? If time is of the essence, maybe you need to pay for something up front just to kind of learn what you don't know and save yourself some time. But again, you get to, you get to make that call. Thanks for watching. Some great advice there. Hope you found it useful and informative. If you're looking for additional guidance on your career journey, click the buttons on the screen to see the next video in the series or watch the full length episode for more tips. Both videos are also listed in the description below.